Hello and welcome back to the Dividend Experiment, the channel that can help you build a portfolio that pays your bills. Today I have some very exciting news, I'm going to share with you the latest stock that's been bought on the second year of the Dividend Experiment. It's also the 18th total stock of the Dividend Experiment as a whole. The 18th stock I bought for the Dividend Experiment is BT Group PLC, ticker symbol BT.A. If you follow me on Facebook or on Instagram then you'd already know it as I posted it on there. And as I said last stock of the month, this one's from the UK and is actually part of the FTSE 100. This is good as it means we don't need to pay the US withholding tax like many of the others in the portfolio. So let's get started. What kind of company is BT Group PLC? BT Group PLC provides communications products services in the United Kingdom and internationally. It operates in four segments, consumer, enterprise, global services and open reach. The consumer segment offers mobile, broadband, home phone and TV services. The enterprise segment sells communications and IT services to businesses and public sector organisations. The global services segment offers enterprise communication services. And the open reach segment builds and operates a fixed network that connects homes and businesses together. I think it's important for you, the viewers, to have a fully transparent view of the portfolio, so there's no hiding any crucial details in the whole of the experiment. So, with that in mind, here's the important information. I bought 750 shares of BT Group PLC at 192 pence each. With the fees and commission charges, the total came to £1,459.80. So let's take a deeper look at BT Group PLC and see if it fits the new rules of the dividend experiment. I fairly recently updated the rules of the dividend experiment, but not by much, so you should check out those rules if you haven't caught up yet. I will put one of these little cards up here in the corner. Firstly, the yield. At the time of buying, BT's yield was 8.1%. This is a high yield for this sector, even bigger than AT&T when I originally bought that company, and it's on the top ends of the portfolio. I might be wrong, but I think only Macy's and Imperial Brands have a higher yield so far. The new rule too is to check if the company is trading at a lower price than it usually does and it looks at the 5 year average dividend yield. BT's 5 year average dividend yield is 4.87. So we can see that BT Group has suffered from some massive decrease in share price over the last few years or so. And we'll address the reason behind this later in the second part of the video. So far so good. Let's take a look at the PE ratio next. If we take a look over on Yahoo Finance, we can see a PE of 7.32, which is pretty low and what we really want to see. And this is all well and good, but we should compare it to some competitors in the same industry before deciding if it's good value. So we'll take a look at Vodafone, and Vodafone is making a loss, so no PE there. Deutsche Telekom has a PE of 17.1. Virgin Group is private, so it doesn't list its PE ratio. So there's not much to go on there, but it seems like BT has a reasonable price to earnings compared to these, or at least the ones that show it. BT's payout ratio is 70.64%. That means it fits under the dividend experiment rules, literally just under. Just like we saw with IBM last month, this also means that if profits don't improve over the next few quarters, it's going to be difficult to increase the dividend payments. The last rule of the dividend experiment is that its current ratio must be in line with its peers. BT's current ratio is 1.04. We know that banks prefer to give loans to companies that have a current ratio above 1, so this is a respectable current ratio. Let's take a look at those same competitors as before. Vodafone has a current ratio of 0.99. Deutsche Telekom has a current ratio of 0.7. And again, Virgin Group is private, so has no reason to share this data. BT is doing marginally better here than its competitors on that front as well. And so with that, BT Group has passed the dividend experiment test. But that's not enough to be worthy of a buy, let's find out what news has made this stock do so poorly recently. So what has made the BT stock price perform so badly? First, the biggest piece of recent news is the UK general elections. Yep, another election, the third general election in five years. What's important about this, and I touched on this when I bought National Grid, is that the leader of the Labour Party, Jeremy Corbyn, wants to nationalise the, well, pretty much everything. First, he wants to nationalise energy providers, water providers, 
and the most recent idea is to provide everyone with free internet, which would involve nationalising telecommunication and broadband too. A Labour government would compensate shareholders, instead of buying them out they'd give them government bonds. This is a pretty terrible deal in my opinion, as the dividend for the BT group is over 8%, but government bonds, or gilts as they're called in the UK, only pay about 1% or so last time I checked. BT Group also delisted itself from their New York Stock Exchange in the last few months. This was supposedly simply to reduce reporting costs and complexity, but it's easy to see why removing yourself from easy access from a whole market of investors may have spooked some people. Another big problem is the pension deficit. Lots of these big incumbent companies with many employees have been struggling with their pensions. Take for example GE, General Electric. It had huge problems with its pensions, amongst other problems, and you're probably familiar with how that story with its stock price over the last few years turned out. Problems with pensions have almost become a dirty word amongst investors, and there's some concern about funding both the pension commitments and the dividend, so some are speculating a dividend cut for BT Group. So why did I buy? My belief is that the idea of nationalising the UK broadband is just wishful thinking and not realistic at all. First, it will cost a lot. Corbyn estimated that it's going to cost about £20 billion. However, the BT CEO essentially laughed at this proposal and estimates the total cost at more like £100 billion. This will be supposedly funded by taxing massive internet companies, which have been notoriously hard to tax in the past. Imagining that somehow the Labour Party manages to pull it all off and taxes the likes of Google, Facebook, etc. and they get that £100 billion required. Are taxpayers really going to see this as a good use of money? It has a huge opportunity cost, and I'm sure the electorate would think that £100 billion is better spent elsewhere, especially combined with Labour's other nationalisation plans. The second reason I think this is some pie-in-the-sky scheme is that in order to do it, Labour needs to actually win the election. And with the most recent opinion polls, it doesn't seem like it's going to happen. If they even manage to form a coalition government, then they're going to have to make some concessions and this nationalisation project will probably be one of the first to go. One more reason is that it isn't so simple just to buy back the shares from shareholders. Although most shareholders are from the UK, and they might not want to trade over their shares for the gilts we talked about earlier, it would be more straightforward for the government to implement. A percentage of shareholders are from overseas, however, and that gets more complicated. Many countries have treaties against asset expropriation, so Labour would have to manage to get around those too. When it comes to pension contributions, BT is already trading at a discount to the point where the market have already priced in a dividend cut here. The company is cutting costs at a rapid rate, which is important, as they'll need to invest a lot of money into the new 5G system that will be out imminently. The company have also been doing well by bundling their packages combining TV broadband together to increase the margins on these products. Another positive piece of news is that the CEO has recently bought a million pounds worth of shares himself, showing that he has confidence in the company, or at least confidence in the company at this price level. Overall, this is another company with a big yield, but a big risk that comes with it. It has a lot to do to become a fully safe, stress-free company, but that bit of risk is what gets the big results. Analysts have this one as being between a buy and a hold, which is probably a fair estimate, and the average price target is much higher than current trading price, at 284 pence. But remember, this is not financial advice. Follow at your peril. If you think the dividend experiment sounds like it's going to be interesting, then please subscribe to stay up to date. I'll buy a new stock every month, and there'll be new videos in between. If you think BT Group PLC was a good buy in November, and give this video a like. If you think BT sucks and I'm an idiot for buying this company, then leave a comment telling everyone your thoughts on this one. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you on the next video. See ya!